Hello everyone. So if you have been writing C programs, there are two or three steps that you really do. So you write a, you write the C program in an editor, then you compile it and finally run it. But what happens once you save it and you press the compile button? So what are the intermediate steps? How a high language C program get converted into the machine language? So you'll understand that in this particular video. So first I will discuss the broad steps that happens. The very first thing that you do is you write the C code using a text editor. So there are various text editors. You might be using notepad or you might be using ID like Dave C++ or anything to write your C program. So once you write the C program and you press the compile button, a lot of things happen thereafter. The first step is pre-processing. We'll look into the details of what happens in pre-processing. The pre-processing part is done by the preprocessor. Then the preprocessor, the output of the preprocessor is fed into the compiler for compilation. The output of the compiler, which is an assembly language code, is fed into the assembler, which converts it into the machine code, the object file that is created. Then that object file is fed into the linker which clubs the various object files and finally it generates one single executable file for your program or your project. So these four steps, they happen once you press the compile button. So although for you it is just the compiler, but the compilation part is also completed by the preprocessor assembly and the linker part. Then after compiling, when you give the execution command, two things happen. One, the loader comes into play which loads the program into the main memory and thereafter the final execution happens once the CPU is allocated to your program. So these are the seven steps that happens between writing your code and the execution of the program. Now let us look into the detail what happens at each step. So the very first step is writing the code in the text editor. So you write your C code and you save that file with the .c extension. So let's suppose we create a file called hello.c. So hello.c is our program. So after saving it, the next step will be pre-processing. So the C code is then pre-processed. Now what happens in the pre-processing phase is the input is the .c file and then the pre-processor generally handles all those hash directives that you have used. So if you remember the very first line, hash include stdio.h. So what happens with that during pre-processing is that hash include stdio.h or any other header file that you have included is replaced by the code of that header file. Similarly, it will replace all the, the constants that you have defined or the conditional compilations. And further, if there are any comments, then those comments are removed. So after pre-processing, the output is a .i file. So the input was the .c program. Once it is pre-processed, you will get a .i file. Now let me show you how the pre-processed file looks like. So I will initially show you the code. So let us suppose that this is our code that we have written. So here what we are including is a header file stdio.h. Then I have defined a constant number whose value is 10. And also there is uh, the very first line inside the main is a comment. Okay, so this is my C program dot C file. Now, once it is fed to the P processor, what output you will get? So how to know that you will use GCC, then use minus capital E and write hello dot C. And this gives you so this is the output of the pre processing. Okay, so if I scroll up, so you can see what has happened here is the stdio.h files code has been included into this. Okay, so won't make much sense to us, but just to understand. And what happens to the main code also, if you look here, so you can see there is no header file because that has been replaced by the code in the header file. Then you see there is no define number 10, right? Why? because wherever that number is being used, 
it has been replaced by the value 10. So look at the line in result. Result is equal to 10 plus num1. If you remember in the code, here it was result is equal to number 1 plus num1. Also, there is no comment line here. So the comment has been replaced. It has been deleted or removed. The defined number has been replaced by the actual value and stdio.h file has been replaced by the actual code. So one important thing to remember here is that the .h files, they contain the prototypes of the functions that you have used in your program. For example, in this case, stdio.h includes the prototype of the printf function that you are using in your program. Alright, so now we have the .i file which is fed into the compiler for compilation. So the job of the compiler is mainly to check for syntax errors and convert the high level language code into the assembly level language code. And what we get as an output is a .s file. So let us see how this file looks like. So GCC, I use minus s hello dot i and it generates a hello dot s file. So let me look into that now hello dot s. So you can see this is the assembly language code for that program that we have written. Right. So the next phase now is assembly, which is done by the assembler. So what happens here is the assembly language code is converted into the machine level language code or the object code. So the assembler generates a dot o file. Okay, so whatever file is now generated is machine readable, not human readable. All right, so the next step now is GCC minus C. So we'll use the minus C option now. And the input here is hello.s. So this will convert this assembly language code into object code. So what we are going to get is a hello.o file. Nano hello.o. All right, so if you see here, this is a machine readable code. Now the next step here is linking. Now your program has been converted into a .o file. Remember that we have used a printf function there and where is the definition of printf? That's not in our program. stdio.h file contains the prototype for printf. Now the entire definition of printf has already been compiled and saved into a stdio.o file. Also you can, it's not necessary that your project will have only one C program. It can be combination of multiple programs which fetch data or where the function you have might have used in your main program whereas the definition part in, is in other files and you compile them separately. So separate .o files might be there. So if there are multiple .o files, the linker in the linking phase is going to combine all those .o files and give you a .exe file. So what the linker does, it combines multiple object files and the libraries. For example, the object file in this case of stdio.h, which is stdio.o plus your own hello.o file and combines them to give you the hello.exe, the executable file which you will be able to run. So generally how we get the executable file is we use GCC and write the name of the program and then we can use the minus O option to get an executable file with the name that we want. Let's suppose in this case hello.exe. So generally this is what the only step or the only command that we write. But now you are aware that what all intermediate steps are involved and, and how to generate a file at each step. So this will generate the hello.exe file which we can then execute hello.hello.exe and get the desired output. What happens when I write dot slash hello.exe? Now you want to execute the program. So the last two steps are involved now which is First is loading which is done by the loader. So what it will happen in this phase is the loader will be loading the executable file into the memory. So this involves finding the file on your disk, allocating memory to it and copy the instructions into the memory. And finally the execution happens 
which is nothing but allocating the CPU, which will execute those instructions and produce the final output. So these are the seven steps that happens when you write and execute your C program. So just to summarize, what all things that happened is you have created a .c file, which is pre-processed to give you a .i file. Then comes the compiler, which gives you a .s file. Then the assembler, which converts the .s file into a .o file. And finally, the linker, which converts the, the which combines the multiple .o files to give you a .exe file. I have also mentioned or given the commands here that you might be interested in to get the file at each step. For more such interesting videos, do subscribe. See you next time.